Home Assistant 2024.3, the third release of the year has just landed, and this month features user input for scripts, even more sentences supported in Assist, a new template feature, performance improvements, and a new energy graph. However, the biggest feature in this release is one that is about to break the whole internet apart, bigger than Kim Kardashian, and that is that the legendary and mythical drag and drop feature is no longer a meme anymore and is actually here and a real thing in this release. I can't believe I'm even saying that, along with a bunch of other dashboard improvements, all of which start with pretty much an entire rework of how dashboard layouts work. The way dashboards work currently is by using what's called the masonry layout, where cards get added to a dashboard in a seemingly random order, making it difficult to reach for buttons on a dashboard with muscle memory, since on different displays, it could be in a different position. It's not actually random, but cards get added to the shortest column first, which could change depending on how big or small the display was. The Home Assistant team actually has a great explanation of this on a recent live stream, which I would recommend if you are interested. Anyways, to fix this, there is now a brand new layout in Home Assistant, which is called the Sections Layout, which is a much more flexible and predictable layout based on rows and columns, and is fully responsive, but in a predictable manner by grouping cards together in a section, and then each section you add will populate from left to right, until your display runs out of room, and then it will go onto a new row and start again. You can access the new sections view by creating a new view and selecting the sections view. This is an experimental feature right now, so please be aware that and expect bugs and things to break, and there's no way to migrate your existing dashboard over to sections just yet. But once you create a section view, you will see that you can add cards as normal and then we'll begin to populate in a section and then you can add as many sections as you like to group and organize entities however works best for you. You also see that you can name sections too which is a nice addition. But remember I started this whole section about sections talking about drag and drop? Well that's what sections now enables and if you click and drag an individual card you can rearrange it anywhere you'd like not only within the section it's in, but even to a completely different section if you'd like, which is amazing and a really clean solution. You can also completely drag and drop to rearrange entire sections at a time if you want to switch things up, or completely delete sections and all of its cards. You'll notice that as you resize the window, the cards will collapse and resize in a predictable manner, and everything flows really nicely. A couple of other notable features are that each card can be easily duplicated and you can easily copy and paste cards faster now too. Nice. I think this is a really huge and important new update to dashboards in Home Assistant and one that we haven't really seen since Lovelace was first introduced way back in the day and I think this is going to be like the foundation for a lot of new dashboard features in the future. Sections is going to be a huge part of making a lot of new dashboard features work and yeah I think this is a really really great update. I think it's almost time to do a updated guide on how to do a really nice looking dashboard in Home Assistant. If you're interested in that, do drop me a comment down below if you'd like to see how to build a dashboard from scratch using the new sections feature. Another feature that is kind of related to the dashboard is that scripts can now support user input with fields and the more info dialogue, allowing you to add more of a dynamic element to your scripts and make it easier for regular users to add information. To do this, you can go into your script and add a field and then use that field in your script however you'd like. Then when you add a script to your dashboard and bring up the more info dialog, you'll see that the field appears and then you can enter information before running the script. Now, I know it can be difficult to picture what you would use this for, so one practical example I immediately thought of was that a few years ago I created a fingerprint sensor for Home Assistant and I made a script that let you learn and delete fingerprints from the Home Assistant UI that was made up with a bunch of different cards and input boxes. Well, with this feature I can handle that data input directly into the script, which is really nice. There's also a couple of blueprints that the team has added that you can use to test this out for adding items to a to-do list or as a customizable announcement message, both of which will allow you to see the capabilities of this new feature. Next up, there has been new sentences added to the voice capabilities in Home Assistant. 
Assist now has support for valves, vacuums, media players and also extends support for covers. Valve support open and close commands along with setting it to a certain position. Vacuum support starting a cleaning cycle and also returning to the docking station which is super handy. Media players now support play, pause, skip and also volume control, nice. And finally covers have been extended so that now instead of just asking for open or close, you can now ask for opening to a specific position. Super cool. If you are an energy dashboard user, then this month sees the addition of a new graph, which allows you to track energy usage over time with a stacked bar graph, which looks like a great way to quickly identify peak periods of consumption along with low periods for optimizing billing. There's also a new template feature in this release too, one that I've actually wanted for years at this point, and it's so simple but effective. You know if you look at an entity such as a contact sensor and it will say open or closed, but then you try to use that in a template and it says on or off, which makes sense since it's a binary sensor, but sometimes you want to use the open or closed state instead. Well, the new translated state method allows you to do just that. Instead of using the regular states method, you can change it to state translated and it will show the human readable version. Cool. As for the little things this month, firstly performance improvements have continued and Home Assistant now boots up twice as fast on average which is a welcome addition. If you are a Nabucasa user, you can disable the ability to remotely enable the remote UI for your instance. Matter now has support for transitions for turning on lights. ZHA now supports over the air updates for Zigbee devices using the Zigbee to MQTT community repository. And finally, the climate platform has a toggle option in service calls instead of just regular on or off. As for new integrations this month, there is five new integrations in this release, including a new air quality service and a lawnmower integration. Cool that we are starting to see lawnmowers added to Home Assistant now after that became a new entity type recently. And as for breaking changes, it is a very short list this month, which we love to see. Nothing major at all, but do make sure to have a quick scan for yourself, as always, to make sure nothing applies to you. That's about it for this release. Lots of cool stuff added, and I can't wait to watch the internet blow up over the new drag and drop feature. But great to see all of the new dashboard features, and it is a great start and lays a great foundation for even more dashboard features in future releases, which we will no doubt see over this coming year. Let me know what your favorite feature is down in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. Drop this video a like and get subscribed, and I will see you in the next video.